So when I explain neural networks and introduce it to a class, I do this in the form of a computational graph where we have the operations in our neural network represented as the nodes and then um, basically the inputs and the parameters going into these little operational blocks. Now you don't actually have to do this. I think the older way of explaining neural networks actually just immediately went to the backpropagation algorithm maybe for a feedforward neural network. Um, but these computational graphs is a really nice way of representing neural networks. It gives you flexibility that you don't have if you just kind of derive things in a very structured way. And I wanted to explain this in, in this video. And I will explain that computational graphs is actually um, a form of something um, a little bit more general, which is called automatic differentiation. I'll also hint at some of the practicalities when you're developing neural networks. So the one reason for this is that it's really easy to add additional structure. As long as we know the derivative of our operation, one of those blocks or the nodes in the graph, um, then the gradient computation is fully specified in the graph. You can move forward, you can push data through the graph, but you can also get gradients by going backwards through the graph. So for each node, all you need to know is you need to know how to go from the input to the output, and then you also need to know how to get the gradient with respect to the, um, to the inputs. So as a kind of trivial example, um, if we had a very simple multiply gate, which just took in two scalars like a X and a Y, and our node was a, a Z, and Z is just X times Y, then um, for the forward pass, it's, it's obvious. So you just have Z is equal to X times Y. And then for the backward pass, if you want to um, basically calculate the partial derivatives, all you need to do is you need to tell me how do I get the error signal for X and how do I get the error signal for Y. Okay, and what I can do when I'm trying to figure out what the error signal for Y, the error signal for um, X is, is I can use the error signal for Z because that needs to come from somewhere here um, on uh, the rest of the graph. And so here, for instance, okay, the forward is just X times Y. And then the back backwards, we just define um, delta X, which, you know, you know what delta X is. Delta X is the partial derivative of the loss with respect to um, X. And in this case, you can use the chain rule, which then says this is DZ DX times um, dj dz okay and you've got this you got this from before and you can just return that okay and you know what this is because you know what y and x is so you can calculate that and that okay so the point here is that if i'm going to add any computation to my graph right anything inside a neural network somewhere all i need to do is i need to know how to go forward through that operation and then also how to go backwards how do i get the gradients of the inputs if i know the the, the error signal for the outputs and if i can find that then i can add that node to a graph and that's really really nice so to just state that a little bit more like if we know the error signal for ZL, for instance, we know DZL in this multi-layer feedforward network. That ZL came from backpropping through this block here. Okay, cool. If I know that and I know the derivatives of the output ZL with respect to some other input BL, then I can just backprop directly through this gray operation here if I know this. And then it's easy to get delta B or the error signal of BL. And um, so the point that I'm trying to make here is that if we have blocks here and we're adding them to our networks, all I need to know is how to basically calculate the output of some operation if I know the inputs. And then I also need to know how, if given that I have the error signal of the output of the block, how do I calculate the si error signal for each of the inputs of the block? If I can do that, then I add it to the graph and uh, life is wonderful, butterflies and everything, all of that. Now, in practice, we actually do this. It's probably quite rare that you would actually implement um, this type of a thing by yourself. There are some cases. I'll talk about that. But fortunately for most of us, the creators of packages like PyTorch and TensorFlow and um, JAX have already figured out 
what the common operation blocks are that we will use in a neural network. And they've already figured out the tricky part, which is normally figuring out what the, the derivatives are, the gradients. They've already figured that out and they've implemented these blocks. And all that we probably do is we're just sticking these blocks, um, these blocks together. So for instance, here in this, in this graph here, all you would have to implement in PyTorch would just be how to get from X to y hat and then you would have the loss function there as well and as long as you can go forward and some programmer has calculated the gradients for each of the blocks for you already then you can just use these blocks in PyTorch directly. We looked at the specific example of neural networks here but this is actually an example of the more general methodology of um, automatic differentiation. So then the question is, why do we actually study backpropagation if the software PyTorch and JAX and TensorFlow can already do it for us? What's the point of me ex explaining this to you? Um, well, there's a few reasons, um, apart from it just being interesting and, and worthwhile knowing about. Um, in some very simple cases, you might not want to rely on the bulky PyTorch or, or TensorFlow packages. So in the NLP course that I teach when we do word to vec you can actually calculate those gradients quite, quite easily by yourself and, and then implement it directly in NumPy. More typical um, is that sometimes you end up having to do something slightly non-standard and then you might want to add a new computational operation that isn't in PyTorch already and then you might need to kind of override or figure out how to do the backward stuff. The even more common case is that your hacking part of uh, uh, the gradient computation for an existing block that already exists and you just want to modify it slightly but even then you need to understand backprop.